CataractCoach.com. And the second eye of a patient with Zion or loss. The first eye was tough. So what should I do differently for the second eye? So we've already marked the cornea off. Those are the toric markings as you can see on the cornea that show us where we're going to line up our IOL. It's going to be an EDOF, extended depth of focus, toric IOL. And remember the first eye, which was yesterday's video, video number 1248, that showed you the extensive Zionor weakness and loss. And what are we going to do there? Whew, that was a tough video. That one I showed you at two times normal speed. This video is going to be at real time. Now, I'm going to make this incision here. I'm not going to worry about making it on that steep axis in this video. Why? Because that first eye was such a struggle. If I have to do the same kind of maneuvers, I do not want to have to shift my hand in some odd position. So I'm slightly off, still against the rule, but slightly different. Now, here's the most important thing. What is going to happen when I touch the lens capsule? A little wrinkling, but not too bad. It looks pretty good. The whole nucleus is not moving. So that's a darn good sign. Now remember, in the first eye, there was a lot of Zion loss, and usually that can be two things. One, patient trauma, car accident, airbag hit the face, both eyes got hit very hard. Second could be some developmental thing, patient protoplasm, that's just how the tissue is. And oftentimes, the first eye can help predict the second. So in this eye, we're going to be extra cautious. So we're going to be extra cautious here, doing our hydro dissection. I'm going to watch carefully. Now, the rexus was a lot better in this side than the other. And let's see if we can get that endonucleus out of the bag. So same technique as the other one. I want the endonucleus out, so hydro delineated. And have that epinuclear shell hold the capsular bag back away from me while I get the endonucleus out. Now, patients sometimes don't even recall they had trauma. So I asked, did you have any trauma? Your first eye was a hell of a challenge, I say. And it says, no, nah, I don't really call any trauma, but maybe. And that just says, okay, let me just be cautious here. So same thing here. I'm kind of slowing it down. I'm being extra vigilant. As I'm taking out this endonucleus, I'm kind of looking around and making sure I don't see too much flopping around of the lens capsule. Make sure I don't see any really clear red reflex. So I'm just kind of slowing it down a little bit here. It's not a dense cataract, not a difficult case. And remember, this is also why I teach you, give the first surgeon the benefit of the doubt. You see a patient, and the first eye clearly had some complications in the surgery. Sulcus lens, and an irregular pupil, and whatever it is. And if you look at that patient, look at their second eye, and you think, well, I'll do a much better job than the first surgeon. Well, let me tell you, you may be surprised. The first surgeon is usually a lot better than you're giving him or her credit for. So keep this in mind. Patients who have a complication on the first eye are far more likely to have it on the second eye. Remember, there's a published study that shows that if a patient got cystoid macular edema after cataract surgery, there's a 50% chance, 5-0, of having cystoid macular edema in the second eye. So remember, give the first surgeon the benefit of the doubt. Patient protoplasm, patient tissue, that's what makes this game so challenging and so fun, right? You kind of never know what you're going to get into in these cases. Every so often, pow, it's a surprise. Now, luckily in this case, guess what? Everything's normal. You can tell this video is being played in real time. It's not sped up. And the whole case is about six minutes or so. So it's not a difficult case. Everything's going to go smoothly here. But my point of this is you've got to do things a little differently on the second eye if your first eye had issues. So on the first eye, which was yesterday's video, 1248, you saw three, four clock hours of Zion or loss, absence, very tough. I had to put a CTR in. I had to really take our time. We avoided vitreous prolapse. We kept the anterior hyaloid face intact. We got the lens at the correct toric axis and the EDOF focusing element beautifully centered in the, in the central Purkinje images in the visual axis. Whew, but it was a lot of work. But in this case, look, it's going to be a lot easier. Now, one thing I'm going to do differently now, fill up the capsule bag, Let's be a little bit more cautious about going bananas with regards to capsule polishing. I still don't believe this is going to be 100% normal capsule, so I'm going to be super duper cautious. When we deliver that lens, I want to not manipulate it too much. I want to try to get it at the correct toric axis right off the bat. I want to be very cautious here. Now, I'm happy to say this patient's now, you know, a couple months after surgery and just had a beautiful post op recovery. Fantastic visual results. I'm so pleased with the patient's progress. 
But remember, the results you get from surgery are 50% your surgical technique, and that's why you study cataract coach so much so you can get better your technique. Well, let me tell you, 50% of it is the patient's healing, the patient's tissue. And sometimes the eyes don't respond the way they should or the way we want them to. So we got to be cautious here. So yeah, I'll polish up a little bit of the capsule bag here, but I'm not going to go bananas over it. And I'm going to clean up all that cortex, a little bit of subincisional stuff left. We'll get that out. And you can see that toric lens still needs to be rotated about one and a half clock hours um, clockwise. So there we go. We'll t rotate that clockwise a little bit more. And you can see the marks on the cornea. And I look at the three dots on the IOL. So my goal is very simple. I just line up the three marks on the cornea with the three marks on the IOL. And that will have the IOL in the correct orientation. If you're wondering how I mark these things and do these calculations for torque letters, come on now. It's on cataractcoach.com. Drives me mental when, patient, when, when, when viewers post a comment on YouTube and it's clear that you're an ophthalmologist, but you haven't bothered to even do a little Google homework first. Do your homework. Don't make me do your homework for you. So here's the end of the case. It goes beautifully, sealing this up. His post-op course was uneventful. He did beautifully. Everything went great. And I'm really happy to say that uh, he's seeing well in both eyes. But keep in mind, if you have a trouble or a problem on the first eye, you could very well have the same issue on the second. And if someone else did that other surgery, give him or her the benefit of the doubt.